Into the realm of vermilion haze, like evil witches, they come from underneath the castle with their vicious rifts to destroy us like rats until we worship their temple. The bell, bell of, of doom, doom chimes. The bell of doom chimes, and the stronghold for eternity begins on this episode of Graphic Metal. <laughs> Metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. Today, got our top picks from April and May 2024 for the sector of Doom and Stoner Metal, presenting them as they were released. So let the aftermath of Blight begin. Vermilion Haze by Ozord, a Doom Stoner grunge metal album released on March 15th. Any Alice in Chain fans out there? This one is for you. This is more of your like accessible side of Doom, where it is dangerously close to Stoner or grunge, hence Alice in Chains. So if you're into that, you will love this. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one an 84. Apotheosis by Temple of the Fuzz Witch, an occult stoner doom metal album released on April 5th. This fuzz is all the buzz. Third album for these evil witches who came up from underneath the earth to destroy us with their rifts until we worship them in their temple of fuzz. Oh, and they're from Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> totally makes sense. Which leads you to wonder just how much smog did they inhale from the Ford plants? From a branding perspective, I think any of the following would have been better. Temple of Fuzz, Temple Witch, or Fuzz Witch. As for the music, they pick up where Sabbath left, left off and went to an even darker and heavier place. With that said, it has become increasingly crowded in this sector of music. So their ability to stand out could lead them to a bright future. And as such is tied with another for the Doom album of April 2024. Bow down. This band has something special brewing. Graphic Mile Rating gives it a 89. <laughs> The Bell of Doom by Under the Sun, a stoner metal album released on April 5th. Get out your bike. We're headed on the road for a good time with some beaters and a campfire. And this upbeat rock and roll stoner disc from Athens, Greece. Not original, but it's chock full of fuzz grooves and a feisty attitude. Lyrics can be a little simple, but strong vocal performance here. Keep your blood flowing with this one. Graphic Bell Rating gives it an 84. Into 
Into the Realm by Castle Rat, a Doom slash Proto metal album released on April 12th. Where did King Volume Records get all their money? That's what I want to know. No album so far this year was pushed harder in the market than this album. I couldn't go anywhere without ads on it. It's like Greta Van Fleet all over again, except swap out Zeppelin for Black Sabbath this time around. I get it. Castle Rat feels like they look the part. No doubt that they are attractive and they, you know, got the branding down in spades. So you know that I love that aspect. But the question is, well, besides if Riley Pinkerton, a.k.a. Rat Queen, wears that chain bra everywhere she goes. <laughs> Seriously, I, I'm, I imagine scrolling into a local grocery store and there she is pushing the cart wearing that. Heck, I wouldn't even be surprised if it turns out that she's actually the one in those new uh, Target video campaign commercials. <laughs> let's, okay, let's be clear for a moment. This band is not bad. Better than Greta was upon arrival. But interestingly enough, I actually think that Riley is the weak link. I love her dedication to wearing that much hairspray. And she is easy on the eyes. But she's not a great singer. That's the truth. And that's a problem for a proto, you know, doom metal band that puts that much emphasis on the vocals. The rest of the bandmates, you know, they play their part. And there are some really strong moments. But the Rat Queen just, it ruins it. The more I listen to it, that's what I can't get past. Oh, and this is not an album. It's an EP. At only 30 minutes? Come on, you're not a punk or death metal band. I love their aesthetic and design efforts, you know, for sure. I just, I think that they could turn into something cool, but I just don't see it or hear it yet. Graphic Metal Rating gives it a 75. <laughs> In the Aftermath of Blight by Subterrain, a doom slash atmospheric death metal album released on April 12th. I have to admit, I had to look up the word blight, <laughs> what it meant. I, 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 I totally forgot. And then, and then of course, I reminded myself that that's right. It's, it's, it's a disease that damaged, you know, and kills plants, which... <laughs> I actually, I'm glad that I looked it up because the example in the dictionary that they gave is hilarious. His arrival cast a blight on the wedding day. I mean, that is very specific. It makes you makes you wonder. Uh, botany aside, well, actually, hold on for a moment. This band actually kind of feels like a plant, specifically that of Masula, the great, you know, basin bristle scone pine, you know, it, which might have, you know, 5,000 years on subterranean, but, but despite the band just forming in 2017 from, from, uh, not, uh, France, this, you know, with this only being their sophomore release, these guys, they just, they sound and feel like they've been around forever. My, my hat goes off to them. Atmospheric you know, sludge, death, or, you know, doom. It's not an easy style to pull off, but they do it with flying colors in the same way as their sibling from France in, in Cult of Akko do. This is the other album that is tied for doom album of 20, uh, April 2024. Definitely recommend it for fans of dark, mood, moody energy that still attacks your heart with rhythm and riffs. 
Graphic Battle Rating gives it an 89. A Mortal Binding by My Dying Bride. A doom metal album released on April 19th. The Bride dies once again, and this time, it's for good. Ooh, creepy. <laughs> they need no introduction. One of the most influential bands for all things regarding pain, despair, tragedy, and romance. A.K.A. Gothic Funeral Doom. One of the coolest things about this band is how easily recognizable they are. You instantly know who they are within a couple minutes of listening to any of their songs. You could even argue in seconds. Album 15 for these legends hailing from Halifax, England. Here is a fun game actually for you. Add all their studio albums into one playlist. Put a blindfold on and set it to, to randomize, right? I bet you can't guess which song is coming from which album at no more than 25% a clip. Possibly, no band has ever changed as little than they have. I once used to listen to them all the time, especially in college. And I have no problem with this one either, but I no longer in good conscience can grade them too high anymore because they've been so unoriginal with little change for such a long time now. I, I also don't think that they can attract new fans as such because, I mean, you either already know and love them or at this point, you clearly don't care. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one a 72. Cometh the Storm by High on Fire. A stoner sludge doom metal album released on April 19th. We stay at the funeral, but now the rain is pouring down on us and Mike is standing against a tree with a smoke preaching about Lovecraft, war, and religion. Almost just as consistent and influential, but we now switch from to stoner and, and sludge. A little bit of doom. Not many people can claim a champion belt in a given subgenre let alone two. But Matt Pike is not a typical man. This underrated legend has created not one, but two iconic bands in Sleep and High on Fire. Despite this, somehow he's consistently under the radar. And High on Fire? How have consistently also stayed on the radar. Have always been a, a huge fan of these guys, well, both of them and, and Sleep. If not familiar, they come via Oakland, California and started back in 98 after the breakup of his former band, Sleep. He decided he really liked the, the power trio thing he had with his former band and elected to do the same thing with High and Fire, who have now gone on to release nine albums. This was also the largest gap between albums by a significant amount, that being six years. Ben, if you are listening, I agree. It's another strong, solid effort from them. But Igor... Explain yourself. <laughs> Typically, this band is just like Bride, where they 
they they never really stray too far away from their beaten path. But for possibly the first time ever in their career, we get a slightly different version of this band. As this time around, we still get you know the, the, the stoner doom part, but they removed the thrash and replaced it with like tribal prog. Outside of the beating, there is a distinct absence of faster speed pace, which I think causes an an issue in lack of overall balance from complete end to end as an album. A shame because the doom on this one might be the strongest that they've ever sounded. And Karnalik Yil is one of the freshest songs that they have ever written. It reminds me of actually when Sepatura introduced those tribal instruments, the you know, instrumentals on KSID. Speaking of Sepatura, with, well, actually, the Cavalera brothers, June 21st, just a few days away, mark it down on your calendar, something special is coming. As for the cometh the storm, it's not the most powerful of storms, but it will do it will it will do some destruction for sure. I just wish that there was a little bit more windy conditions. Graphic model rating gives it an 82. A Certain End of Everything by Blazing Eternity, an atmospheric doom metal album released on April 19th. Well, this was a surprise. Talk about eternity. It's been 21 years since their sophomore release back in 2003, a band that started out as Ancient Sadness coming via Copenhagen, Denmark. Fairly similar to My Dying Bride, along with like early Catatonia, mixed with a little bit more atmosphere, think Agalash. Actually, November's Doom, that's another band that comes to mind. Well, in mind the thrash part of them, it's, you know, the melodic atmospheric Doom side of them. It's good. The atmospheric part 1,000% is what steals the show. The, the rest, including the vocals, which are, are not the best by any stretch of the imag imagination and kind of ruin the vibe a little bit, but because they do such a damn good job at capturing just raw, authentic, powerful, moving moments in like a la explosions in the sky level of emotion. It makes the album as a whole something something special to listen to. As one could argue, you know, the number one goal of all music, right, is to make us feel something on an emotional level. And this album, oh my gosh, it does it in spades. And as such, is my Doom album for the month of May 2024, Graphic Metal Rating gives this one an 87. The Stronghold by The Lumberjack Feedback, a sludge slash doom metal album released on April 24th. They must have really strong backs to name their band the Lumberjack Feedback. It's a five-piece instrumental band from Louis, France. Bad-ass album cover. And the music, it ain't, it ain't bad either. Graphic Model Rating gives it a 74. <laughs> Beneath the Threshold by Austere, an ambient 
Doom Metal album released on April 25th, coming via New South Wales, Australia. Uh, it's it's okay. Some decent memories, melodies, eerie tone and atmosphere. That's about it. Graphic Bell rating gives it a 76. And that was the list. Some of the other subgenres are already available, so check them out. And here are some other videos of ours. And check back soon for our other continued picks for the other subgenres of rock and metal for the months of April and May, coming very soon. Until then, cheers and keep on rocking. <laughs>